I'll bet there's no one listening who hasn't heard of the Holocaust or the rape of Nanking, but how many of you have ever heard of the Armenian Genocide? Well, joining me in the studio now is Roxanne Makostian, and she is the co-founder of the Genocide Education Project, and she's going to educate us all about the Armenian Genocide. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I learned so much uh, just talking to you about this. The, give us the very brief um, synopsis of what was the Armenian Genocide and when did it take place? The Armenian Genocide happened uh, in 1915. It was during World War I. Uh, it happened in what was then the Ottoman Empire. Uh, today, Turkey is the largest part remaining, and the Turkish government was heading the Ottoman Empire. And within the empire were uh, various subjects, but the largest subject peoples were the Armenians. They had been there in their homeland for several thousand years before the Turks came in and established the Ottoman Empire. They lived there as second-class citizens. Uh, in During World War I, the Turkish government the new Turkish government at the time decided that they wanted to create a Turkish-only Turkish uh, country. And in order to do that, they needed to rid themselves of the Armenian population. So and they did that? They did that in and massive uh, death marches into the desert. How many were killed? about a million and a half, which was more than half of the population, Armenian population at the time, and confiscated all of their properties, both personal properties, land, community properties, schools, etc., were all appropriated and turned over to the Turks. Why is it we have not heard about this before like we have about other genocides like Rape of Nanking of Rwanda or Holocaust? When the Armenian Genocide was happening, it was known broadly around the world. The New York Times covered it on its front pages even more than they covered the Holocaust when the Holocaust was happening. And there was a phrase that I even remember growing up that parents would say to their children, eat all the food in your plate, remember the starving Armenians. Uh, that was a very commonplace term, and so it was very well known uh, at the time, and it prompted the very first major humanitarian effort by the American Red Cross in this country. Um, but very soon after it happened, very soon after World War I, politics and alliances changed, and the Turkish Republic at the time decided to begin to deny that it ever happened. And they were strong, and they kept that line until today. So what is it you're trying to do with the Genocide Education Project? Make sure it's not forgotten. Um, make sure that students have the knowledge and education they need to fight revisionism, to know the truth when they were, are faced with denial, because that denial results in a very is continuing major political problem that continues to affect the region today. And this genocide education project takes place, place in all California high schools? In fact, we're nationwide. Whatever teachers across the country or school districts or schools want help in incorporating the Armenian Genocide instruction into their coursework in high school, we're there to help give workshops, give guidance, provide lesson plans, background materials, homework items, uh, things like that. There are 11 states in the country that require this. And how do people get in touch with you if they're interested? The course materials, the most important part of what we do, are on a website called teachgenocide.com or okay. .org. Well, thank you so much, Roxanne, for being here and educating us about the Armenian Genocide. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you for joining us for another edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I hope you'll be with us again next time. Bye-bye for now.